Hello, Ule. Hi, Alexandra. It's our second part, and uh, there were some changes you were uh, about to go to Sweden or for some tour with. Uh, oh, could you? Yeah, I'm, I'm on my way on a sort of like a mini tour. I'm going, I was going to, or I am going to Sweden, to Gothenburg. I was invited to the alternative uh, book fair there. I'm going to do a, a presentation about the uh, Martin Luther King assassination. I'm also going to do hopefully some filming with Judith Mary Baker, the mistress of uh, Lee Harvey Oswald, who was also recruited by the CIA to be part of creating a bioweapon against uh, Fidel Castro. Uh, then I'm going to go to uh, the Netherlands and I'm going to do, I'm going to meet some publisher there and stuff. And then I am doing a whole day seminar there. And then I go on to Denmark where I'm going to do a presentation, uh, a similar one about the Martin Luther King assassination, where I found some groundbreaking new evidence that has never ever been exposed before. But uh, things are changing rapidly. I'm, I'm going anyway, but yesterday, uh, just when I was, uh, I'm, I mean, I'm in the process of packing the bags more or less, I was uh, sent an email saying that the book fair in Gothenburg has been canceled by police and authorities because of uh, security reasons, they say. And uh, for me, that is quite bizarre that an alternative book fair, the reason why it's alternative is because last year, uh, I don't know the political aspects of this whole thing, but what I know is that Sweden has the liberty to the freedom of speech. That is one of the, the, the four ground laws or, or whatever you want to call them. I don't know the English word for it, but uh, is the freedom of speech and also the freedom of the press. And here last year, there was a, I think it's a, a newspaper called Nya Tiger, which have, uh, I don't know them at all very much, though, and I'm not interested in politics either, but apparently they are against uh, the, the uh, amount of immigrants coming into Sweden and so on. And because of that, they have been labeled uh, right extremists. But I mean, the last time I looked into the dictionary about being a right extremist has nothing to do with that you're critical against immigration or anything that is sort of like on a totally different level but last year uh, they were going there and also they were uh, gonna sell my book coup d'etat in slow motion part one and two and they're the first one who's opened up for this uh, book uh, at all in sweden i mean i've i a few years ago i sent uh I sent out emails to 1,100 media contacts in Denmark and in Sweden, offering my book for free as an ebook, saying, listen, this is a trauma for Sweden and big parts of the world. It's been going on. It's the biggest murder investigation in the history of the world, the most expensive one in the history of the world. And the official story is still that we're standing on uh, the crime scene looking down at where he was shot and not understanding anything just still questioning it was it the patsy was it not was it the official story was it not my book which is a, almost a thousand pages go into extreme details about what actually happened then names pictures you name it so i'm not claiming that the whole truth is there but i do claim that i found a major part of it so i've been offering this to journalists and uh, media content, just saying, I'll be, I'm willing to do whatever I can to assist you. I've been spending so many years of my life uh, in putting my life on the line as well, having people, friends murdered. I had to change country. And so I put a lot into finding this truth. And so I said, anything I can do to assist you, please contact me. Here's my book. I can send it to you as an ebook. Whatever it takes, let's do it together. Out of 1,100 emails that I sent out, how many answers do you think I got? How many answers, Alexander? How many replies? <laughs> I got two. Two. And out of these two, it resulted in a one a five minute radio interview in Copenhagen. So I would say there's something strange going on here because uh, really, if if you're a journalist and somebody is offering you 
something like that. I mean, I'm a former journalist. If somebody would offer me something like that for a massive national trauma, including the second uh, national trauma in Sweden, which is the sinking of MS Estonia, and both of them are presented in this book, I would at least say, yes, please send me the ebook. I'll have a look. If it's crap, I throw it out. If it's good, let's see what we can do. Two answers out of 1,100 emails. I think there is something bizarre going on here. And then last year, when they were going to sell my book, I'm not saying it was because of my book. I'm saying that the same people that were open uh, to this kind of information and presented it in, the, in their magazine as well, uh, they got kicked out of the book uh, fair in Gothenburg. And also, I, I went a few years ago, I've been doing several um, presentations in Gothenburg, and the only uh, place where uh, this organization, there was an, uh, an organization called Kui Bono in Gothenburg, who have been arranging a presentation like that. And the only place they could uh, afford to rent was actually the, uh, not the Freemasons, the Temple Leader Orden in Gothenburg, which is a Freemasonic uh, thing, but they rent them out to, to anyone. So I thought it was quite funny to stand and be there and talk about these things in their own uh, sort of building. But anyway, after I did my presentation, there was somebody else coming and then that thing was shut down as well. They weren't allowed to continue. And then, so this year, uh, the people uh, behind the newspaper, Nia Dorgan, Nia Tider, if I'm understanding correctly what is happening here, because I haven't been really feeling. Anyway, they decided to uh, make an alternative book fair at the same time as the, the big one, just so that you could offer, here is for the official, here is for someone who's interested in more uh, of different uh, types of information that is apparently not being allowed. And so uh, I was invited by a friend to go there. I mean, it's, a, it's quite a long flight for me to go up, but I'm happy to do it. Um, we were going there and then uh, the, the address of where they were going to have this book fair was kept secret until the last few days before it and only given to people who had bought tickets, which I think is like a, it's like a book fair. It's not like a hanging party or a lynch party. I mean, what is all of this secrecy going on? And in a country that is officially so peaceful like Sweden, what the hell is going on, I would like to ask. And so yesterday, just a few days before the whole thing uh, is uh, about to start, uh, there was, uh, and there were lots of people invited. I mean, some, some really big major journalists and, and authors in Sweden. Then yesterday, the authorities and the police say, no, we, we have to cancel the whole thing. Uh, we cannot be due to security reasons. We have to to stop it because we can't guarantee the security for people inside because the reactions on the outside and demonstrations and and we have decided that we are more focused on like sport events and uh, things that will affect more people than a private uh, arrangement like this so we will we will just cancel it and i would say okay, maybe it is that uh, what they're saying, but for me, it sounds more like they're gagging us, that they're shutting us up. And uh, for me, that is absolutely not okay. And I would say, what the hell is going on in Sweden, to say the least? And where did the Sweden go that I, was, I grew up in? I mean, I came from Denmark, I moved to Sweden as a kid, and the country I moved to is not the same country that is calling itself Sweden today because uh, bizarre things. And I'm very worried, I must say, about Sweden because uh, the Swedish population, in my opinion, this is my private personal opinion, the population of Sweden is highly educated, highly intelligent. I mean, you name it, they're up there. Uh, well equipped with high tech uh, gadgets all over the place, you name it, when it comes to technology, they got it. So they should be some, a population that was really aware, I think, that were really on top of these things, 
that would be very active in exposing what's going on to save their country and save the rest of us, you know, to stop this very dark agenda that is going on. But what we see is totally the opposite. I, I see, it's like, uh, I have not seen a sleeping nation on, to the amount of, of Sweden. It's like, but it, no one is aware of it. They all think that they're so enlightened, that they're so sharp, that they're so on top of it. But it's the exact opposite. And I think Sweden is really being used as a ten run, uh, test run, um, like a Formula One unit where you test out new technologies, new whatever, and you see other population, will they accept it? What if we do that? What is gonna happen? We just digital money, bring out, take out the, the cash money that's tested out here. Okay, nobody's protesting. There's a few little here, a little there. Okay, let's do it another step, another step, another step. And it's just like they're putting it, putting it closer and closer. And the Swede will not react. That's it's the boiling frog mentality. You just heat up the water a little uh, more, a little more, a little more. And in the end, the frog will, will die, be boiled to death, but they will, it will not react because the temperature is just going up slowly, slowly. That is Sweden. And it's very sad because it's such a beautiful country. It has all uh, the possibilities of being an amazing nation, I think. But uh, sad, sad to see what's going on. And, and I really, th it's not to criticize this country. I love the country. I love the people. But come on, this is not a time, it's not okay to be asleep anymore because things is going down. Things are being destroyed and Sweden is being set up on a major plane, I think. You know, there's so much going on in Sweden that is of a negative character. When you look at Sweden as a free country, a neutral country, yeah, right, where did that go? And also to people in Sweden, please, or whatever country it is nowadays, so much criticism is aimed towards the immigrants. Please ask yourself, who is the one allowing the immigrants in? Who is the one allowing or deciding how much immigrants should be given in uh, social benefits and whatever that causes all of these, uh, this uh, anger and jealousy and uh, so on? Who is doing it? Is it the immigrants that are deciding that they will be given more than normal Swedes? Is it the immigrants that decide what kind of uh, apartments they're giving, how much, many and much clothes and so on, compared to what a normal Swede is? No, it's your authorities. It's your government that is doing it. And why are they doing it? What is the logic? There's always a logic behind it. And the logic here, stir it, stir it up, stir the emotion so that you can get the whole thing boiling under the surface because what they're aiming at is destroying sweden and all the other countries destroy the national identity destroy the language destroy the the race destroy uh, you name it destroy it. the sex the children the families the structure the finances everything is online to be destroyed because that is part of the new world order destroy the old and out of the ruins Boom, up comes what is called the New World Order, where they will create out of the ruins of the old, their new world. And that, my friend, is a scary, scary place. If you don't know their plan, it's very easy to read up on it. You can just see Agenda 21, Agenda 30, books of David Rockefeller, George Soros, these type of individuals. They are very, very open about it in their biographies and their books, they, they, it's all lined up. This is the plan and we're going to do it to you. And the rest of us are sitting, picking our nose and watching X Factor while it's happening. So now so much information is out there. So no longer any excuse not to inform yourself. It's right there. in front. It's a click away from your button. It didn't used to be like that, but it's thanks to people like Alexandra, I must say myself as well, who's devoted more than half my life into trying to expose these things, that this type of information is now available. Many people have died, had put their career, their name, got their families destroyed, their lives destroyed to get this information out there.
so that it could be read by someone like yourself. But many out there is just not interested because it's more comfortable not to know. And also the mortgages, the stress, the kids, the daycare center, whatever. Please understand that also that this stress factor is made, it's done by design to keep you occupied. The level of debt is done by design. It's just done with, by temptation. Here, here, we will offer you this. Just hook on this hook and you will never be able to get off it. And we will be able to control you, but do it, do it. That's how they get us, you know, buy this one or buy that one. If you don't have this latest gadget, what will your neighbor say? It's never what will the government do or the police, it's the neighbor. What would they say? What would they do? And that's how they control us. So I would, uh, I would just like to give the dark forces a very significant finger like this. And uh, I would say back off and leave us alone and just let us get on with life we're supposed to have, where creativity and free speech and all kinds of beauty in the form of races and religions and whatever get on with each other. No war, just a, no, a world that we can create for ourselves instead of a tiny little group like a cancer growth that is trying to destroy us from within. Well, they have their agenda and they want to have that world, so, so they are not giving up so easily. No. On the contrary, so uh, but uh, so you would be in Gothenburg on a Friday or Saturday and talk. Oh, I don't hear it. I don't hear it. No, I'm going there anyway. So listen, I I really don't care. You know, a book fair, a book fair or not. For me, I'm going there because I'm gonna also meet very. Uh, wonderful people, very awake, awake people in Gothenburg, uh, a little film crew. We're going to do different interviews. There's some somebody uh, I know that is flying in from New York uh, all the way there just to spend a day together. We're going to do films and stuff like that. I hope Judith Berry Baker uh, will, will come down, down anyway. So we will uh, do uh, filmed interviews with her as well because she is one of the most important uh, witnesses alive i think uh, today and uh, so for me these things i don't care at all uh, you know it's like okay they stop here i go there they stop here i go over they stop there i go under it's like okay fine that's the way it works so it's like surfing the waves and uh, not let it affect you so i'm not uh, you know like i was c called yesterday and people were saying but Aren't you, aren't you upset? Aren't you this? Absolutely not. I just focus on doing my part. And what can I do more? You know, let the rest to the angels and God or whoever. I feel very strongly that this is going to go super good, but it's getting very scary for most people because it's sort of being, we're being pushed into a corner. But we've been in this corner for a long, long time without most people understanding it. And so many times before, the end of the world was here, you know, 2012, the finances of the US, the planets colliding, you name it, it's game over, game over, game over. That's what everybody says on a regular basis. But I tell you, we're still here, still standing. So it's just a matter of joining hands and wake up and let's just transcend this whole thing together. Yeah, but also um, they are da dangerous now because people see them. Uh, people can also, for example, uh, I said that uh, like killer YouTube channel like killers, which is obviously under the control of the head of Illuminati, that they were threatening uh, with uh, to torture and murder uh, specific YouTubers with names, and the first one was Alex Jones. So Alex Jones could say that YouTube, Google take down his YouTube channel, which was like for 2 million subscribers or something like that, and messing around with him. And in four years, they let, they allow a video with death threats against him, 
uh, we will torture you, we will murder you. And it's on YouTube in four years until I said that, I don't know, to Kerry Cassidy, Roger Kamlov, and I believe the video is uh, has been removed. But you know what? Um, I have my papers around here. So um, on 10th of May of 2018, you can see uh, see it in the picture. The the video was still out there on YouTube from 11th of June 2014. A message for haters of gods to witnesses by lie killers. This means that if anyone will try to spread this info, lies, duplicate videos from these channels, or even humiliate humiliate these channels, will be killed. And it was Alex Jones' YouTube channel. You can you can see it, mm -hmm. uh, maybe. So still, this was on on 10th of May of 2018. Google shouldn't allow allow that, but they do it. And you know what was else? And I gave it to police. What do you think? Another video from YouTube channel like it attacks of major cities. Also, it's from 10th of May, done 12th of July, uh, June 2014. Another one, we will kill uh, Pope. Like, and Pope, they will be also, and we have prepared, now we strike. Uh, we will do nuclear attacks, harp crimes, we will uh, give you like in air, water, uh, substances that make you sterile. Nobody will, nobody can uh, like uh, fly from it. <sighs> Threats here, like in four years, it's still there. Mm -hmm. The only video I, I saw that they removed was was this uh, with threats against Alex Jones because he could go to court and mm -hmm. say one of the videos was monetized so you could check which bank it is and all these secret services that could see this. Of course, let it, you know, it's their boss who is presenting this, the, the boss of the United Secret Service criminals intelligence criminals. I, I think it's really interesting what is going on now because uh, you see things, there's quite a lot of things being allowed on YouTube and Google, you know, that is very hateful, that is very violent, that is very... But if we talk about these things that we talk about now, especially around false flag operations, how they're built up and stuff, you get a strike right away. Boom, they, they shut it. So very often I do an interview because I, I focus on these top political assassination and false fact. Within 24 hours, boom, it's gone. And so, okay, that t should tell you something, I think, if all of the other ones are allowed and uh, all kinds of uh, things about uh, against uh, racism, no races and... Uh, and pro-violence and pro this and pro that all of these are let alone and isis videos are left out there alone saying that this is the real boogeyman this is the real enemy and then these type of things are shut down i think we should react and say hey hey i'm starting to see a pattern here because why are they, why is it shut down if they don't fear it that's the thing. Why was this book fair in Gothenburg shut down if they don't fear it? I mean, maybe they fear the riots, but what kind of riots are we talking about? In Sweden, really, the most pe peaceful, um, most cowardly country that I know of, I mean, there's no reaction whatsoever. And then a book fair should be the thing that would make everything explode. I don't think so. So what I, I would say, I would suggest what they're doing instead of is shutting it up, shutting it up, and then calling them right extremists. This is, it's almost like uh, if you start pointing towards uh, different elements and different operations. I mean, the only thing I'm interested in, I'm not interested in religion or political or whatever, I'm tracking down 
criminals, most of the time super criminals, serial killers in the forms of presidents or whatever, but murderers and criminals on a high level. That is what I try. I don't care if they're blue, white, yellow, Hindu, Hindu Sikh, Muslim, Christian, whatever. I go for the individual and try to let the truth expose what's going on. But here we see a totally different, different thing where we're not allowed to, we're just being shut down, shut down, shut down. And so for instance, when they cannot stop you with anything else and you are pointing to Zionist elements and so on, or people that have roots or connection with Israel, this is the one you're not allowed to speak about. As soon as you mention that, they will hammer you with this anti-Semite uh, term because that is the ultimate like bazooka to blow your head off. Uh, and I, I saw there was on Democracy Now, there was this interview with a former, um, she wasn't a prime minister, but she was way up, I think a foreign minister of Israel before. And she says very openly, when we can't shut people up, we just use the anti-Semite card, just throw that one in, that will fix it, you know? And so in many areas, they use the anti-Semite card, but in Sweden, as soon as you say right extremist, if you label anything like that, that will shut them up. And then the general population will just say, well, uh, they're right extremists, so they should be stopped. They should be silenced. They should be uh, interfered with. But where's the freedom of speech? It's like, just because I don't agree with it, this freedom of speech is still there, saying that you should be allowed to say things as long as you don't hurt anyone else, you should be allowed to express your opinion. This is not what we're seeing. We're seeing gag orders being handed out. And then in mainstream media, they just use the same forces to shut us down in different aspects. And so here, uh, this uh, the, the newspaper that is, as far as I know, behind this alternative book fair, I don't know if they're right extremist or not. I, I haven't looked into it, but I have been in contact with uh, some key people there because they wanted to sell the book. Very nice people, very uh, intelligent, well-informed, no idea about the political aspect. But as far as I know, there's nothing about let's lynch people or kill them or whatever. It's just we think that this is the immigration is too much for the nation of Sweden. That is a legit opinion you should be able to have that or you should also be able to say i want 40 million more to come in it's just an opinion your opinion and the law of sweden says that you should be allowed to say that but here boom right extremists just printed right over over the whole thing and shut down with the help of the police and authorities what is that you are it's censorship yeah it's censorship and you are too dangerous because uh, you know, there were threats, death threats uh, against us on all the conferences that I have organized. And it was especially you and Fritz, Fritz, and Fritz Brinkmeier. Ah, uh, sorry, Alexander. Because, yeah, and you know that the last lecture of you from the conference was removed from YouTube channel. So why have I invested all this? when they remove it. So it's much better to do it this way and maybe they will remove it again. But now I will go to, in court, to court in Czech Republic because we don't say anything which is illegal. Like killers say definitely uh, things uh, threatened with the Third World War. It's absolutely illegal. Now, 18th of September, 2018, they are threatening with the uh, uh, Third World War. And I recognize the voice. It's the voice of a former employee of Ministry of Interior here in Czech Republic. I recognize his name. And I, was, I said that for three years ago to prosecutor, to police, this man, I know who he is, and many people uh, know him because he was faking that he has lost memory in Norway. 
in in the end of December, um, in the end of 2013. Instead, he was filming uh, the videos for YouTube channel Like Killers for the Illuminati. And one girl there is with his face, with her face, like, and they are saying we will cause nuclear attacks on major cities. <laughs> so, I mean, it's ridiculous, and they. Uh, they take down a whole book fair, mm. probably because you are there, actually. But, but Alexander, you have, uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's just it feels like there's a slight pattern here as well, because I start seeing that if, if I tell where I'm going to go too early, it will be shut down or things will happen. But I don't kick dogs. You know, I don't step on ants. I I treat people with respect, as far as I know. Uh, I at least I'm, that is my intention. I'm not violent. I've never said a hateful word, as far as I know. I'm not aggressive. Why am I such a threat? But it's not me. It's the information. It's the information that is being presented in a fearless way. That is what they fear, because it can spread. And uh, so I think it's, it's fantastic because they're showing us exactly uh, what they fear. It's the same with when you look into health and, and uh, 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 you know, like uh, natural medicine and so on. Why are they trying, they ban colloidal silver. There's, I, I have a, an acquaintance in Sweden who's uh, the, the four figure when it comes to colloidal silver in Sweden. And like he has been put on, if, if I've been informed correctly, he's been, if he says anything pro colloidal silver, he would be fined with 800,000 Swedish kroner just for saying anything against colloidal silver. What is that? That is a gag order. It's censorship. And what are we looking at? We're looking at distilled water with nanoparticles of silver. Is it lethal? Will it kill people? Absolutely not. Can it cure a lot? Yeah. No, you're just making that up. Well, one of the hospitals, for instance, in Sweden, the Astrid Lindgren Children's Hospital, is using colloidal silver in their bandages for kids with very serious burns. And it makes the kids heal up to 30% faster with the colloidal silver than without it. So apparently it's got a lot of good benefits with this whole thing and i i know a lot of people who are using colloidal silver we are using it and so on and here suddenly this person who is the one who knows the most about it in sweden that i know of is now being threatened with almost one million swedish kroner i mean what is that b12 you know b12 that is just a natural a part of uh, like a vitamin that can be injected and make a lot of good it's made it legal like it was heroin you soon i think there's only two two countries left in europe where you can buy it without a prescription they want to get it in so that the doctors can control it so big pharma can control it cinnamon i heard a while ago they're trying to ban cinnamon i mean what it's a spice yeah and and a while ago i also saw doctors were were making statements that vitamins are bad for human beings i mean please wake me up vitamin without vitamins let's see how what you look like you are going to go very pale very weak and maybe you're going to die so you know how can that be bad it's part the vitamin, as far as I know, it even means life giving or something like that. So Vita is life and, uh, and they're trying to ban it. Are these people that are trying to ban it, are they, do they want the best for us? Or question mark, what do they want for us? I would very much suggest they're trying to push us into big pharma and that corner where they can control us and hold us by the balls and just squeeze the life out of us slowly but surely. Yeah, and uh, well, uh, I am a medical doctor, and I understand first now how brainwashed we we have uh, been in certain 
So what I wanted to say also, the mainstream media are colluded and uh, here in Czech Republic, I can see that the, the man who is the chief of Czech television, he was educated also in United States and they use uh, uh, language of codes. I have talked to you about that. And uh, so that uh, if somebody says that they are threatening me on TV, it's very possible they do it. They do it to, to dissidents and so. Uh, I've heard about it first time before I have known anything about New World Order and Illuminati. It was actually a Swedish, female Swedish uh, journalist who has worked, they worked with something like uh, illegal weapons, uh, and that the highest politicians were involved, like uh, Minister of uh, um, Thomas Bootstrom, you know, uh, Justice, and so probably somehow were involved in this, uh, they believed. But they threatened her via advertisement she, she has described, and also other ways, but advertisement she said and first when I heard her I was thinking I am a medical doctor neurologist and psychiatrist so I was thinking is she somehow paranoid or is it possible but then I, I had just stories in my back of uh, my head and when it happened to me exactly the things that happened to her Mm -hmm. uh, then I laughed at it, okay, it's what they do to everybody. And today on Czech television, in the specific field when they uh, want to say something to dissidents or so, there is a picture with uh, monarch butterfly, which is Illuminati sign, and a man who holds the butterfly, monarch butterfly, like 666. I, I don't want to do it, but you want, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's like, he will rip you, rips you in pieces. It's a threat. And I know from whom? From the head of Illuminati. And if I go to the prosecutor, they are threatening me. The Illuminati, uh, via Czech television are threatening me. They tell you that you are paranoid, you are psychically not. So, but many people know about this all over, especially United States. And this uh, female journalist has described it already for so many years ago, before I knew that there were any Illuminati or so. They do it. They threaten people through advertisement, through television. Uh, that are linked to the Illuminati. So they, these uh, people, mass media, has to have education in this, how they will do it, because it's in Sweden, the same Czech, the same United States, the Czech, same. So just that you know that uh, if somebody tells this and work against the Illuminati and New World Order, it is probably real, the threat because it's how they do. They want to tell also that you are crazy, you are a lunatic, but at the same time, they threaten you, blackmail you. It's, uh, it's very hard to know for sure. I mean, you have to look at uh, each individual case and really look into it, but for sure it's happening at times. The scary part, I think, is also that when you go to the police that is there officially to protect you, I can guarantee you they will do the exact opposite they will treat you very bad or totally neglect you or they will not listen to you they will not take you seriously they will not do what they're supposed to do in my opinion they're there to suppose they're there to protect us from threats from the outside if this is from their own government or legal system whatever the threat is still there so they should uh, take it and treat it with uh, serious intention but what we see here I've seen it over and over and over again when people uh, are being becoming aware of st different stuff and they go to the police and the authorities and saying, listen, I'm very concerned because this is what I found out. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. That's standard, standard procedure. And maybe they won't, the police won't even receive 
the application or the the report you're giving to them they won't they won't take it but how how can that happen and that is also when you go to uh, district attorneys or lawyers and, and judges if you get into court you're bound to lose if you really are trying to expose these things. at this point in history you're bound to lose because they've infiltrated the legal system as well to such as an extent that through freemasonic networks and and uh, these different, very uh, difficult uh, or, uh, to identify secret networks of brotherhoods and stuff like that. These are the things that is working in the background and coordinating you to get out of the way. So they, they use the lawyers, the attorneys, the, uh, the judges as well to, to stop people that come forward with, with the critical information, they will be shut down. So uh, the way I see it is like, we need to take the power back, the personal power, don't give it to the government, don't wait for them to do anything, don't wait for the police to do anything, I'm very sorry to say that, don't wait for the journalists to do their job, don't wait for the authorities to do their job, don't wait for the judges to make a real uh, conviction. It's not gonna happen. We have to somehow, regain the power by not giving it away to them by not giving our con consent to them and just somehow join together and say you work for us it's not the other way around i'm not paying you to control me to shut me down i am paying you and your wages and your career whatever that i'm apparently supporting through the taxes i am paying you to do your job which is to defend the population of this nation. So we need to start uh, taking these individuals and say, we see you, I see you as an individual with a title, and I demand that you do what you're supposed to do. Otherwise, we the people will put you to the side and get someone else who's an honest, decent person and willing to do its his job or her job because it cannot go on the way it's it's going now it's so corrupt and it's not just one country it's like wherever i look whatever country i look into whatever coup d'etat or a top political assassination or you name it i go there i start digging it's the same corruption again and again and again but sometimes it's even more dangerous when it comes to a country like Sweden, where most people think, well, Sweden is not corrupted, there's no corruption here. Well, I'm very sorry, there is. And it's right in your face, but you just don't see it. And then I think they're, what also what they're doing is they're corrupting the, the honesty and the decency and the, the great values of, of uh, your word and uh, the good ethic things that the undermining them by corrupting from the top so they they all of these corruption um, uh, things in media oh this politi politician got like a parachute uh, agreement for 480 million blah 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 whatever and this one he did all of these bad things and still he got promoted so in the end when the normal person in the street who keeps reading about these things in the end they think well if they're so corrupted I don't give a shit, so I'm gonna do it myself. And then slowly you just get the whole nation into a sort of a rotting, uh, not development, but it's going the other way around. Decay, where it's just everything is falling apart and no values are there, No, there's no decency, there's no uh, honor, there's no bravery. All of this, the backbone has just been pulled out of a nation. And then it starts spreading because other nations look at, for instance, at Sweden saying, oh, but Sweden is such a fantastic nation. That is what is being pumped out there all over the world. Oh, but Sweden, oh, but Sweden. And that's how they do it. They use countries like that as a test run thing. So if, if we can get away with it in Sweden, then we can, we can start exporting uh, that method to the next country because it was so good that Sweden accepted it. So let's just infiltrate and use it here as well and there as well and there as well and welcome to the new world order the stepping stones that's how the game is played 
And we talked to Cody Snodgrass that uh, he did a job for, for money, a job that he wouldn't do otherwise, very negative things. And uh, uh, he said, yeah, it was, he was caught in this because of money. And uh, uh, I have sent to you an article, I don't know if you have read it, a Swiss banker unmasks Bilderberg criminals. It's like that uh, to these bank, banks in Switzerland, these international banks, came uh, like uh, these notes, uh, almost uh, chiffered or in codes, written that uh, give this, from Secret Service, give this uh, man or so hitman this amount of money and they will kill a president of a server country and how he this um, banker suffered from from this uh, like to know that they will kill people with this money and do revolution and he talks about uh, Bilderbergers of course without his name because it's dangerous to talk about and the reporter it was a reporter from um, some Russian weekly magazine Novi Den it's on um, henrymakovs.com this article from 2011 I believe and uh, he uh, the reporter asks uh, asks um, how much money is it like billions a lot of money oh it's trillions and like it's a lot of money that go undetected and uh, and it's all this that you were talk, talking about last time like drugs and child trafficking organ mm -hmm. uh, harvesting uh, weapons illegal weapons and it's like governments involved in that and the so-called aristocrats like uh, those who would be lords or princes or so and they are involved in this behind our backs and conspire yeah. there's a lot of evidence pointing that way for sure this specific case uh, i i always feel like just because there's an article there doesn't mean that it's true uh, so we really need to double and triple check our facts and really see how it is it's possible that this is uh, actually what happened and also try and uh, Get hold of the individual. In this case, it's very tricky because it's also very dangerous for uh, someone, if he is who he uh, says he is, to step forward like that. But and also one thing that uh, uh, that uh, sort of makes me a little aware of this case is that I'm not saying the whole, what you're talking about in in general, the bigger picture. That is absolutely correct. I'm talking about this specific event and. A banker uh, who are informed that the money would go to specific assassinations, that is very strange to me because these uh, operations are normally totally compartmentalized. So not even the hit team are informed really about who they're hitting. They're just like uh, a man in blue with a hat coming at four o'clock, boom. Uh, you know, that, that is often what they're being informed of so that it's on a need to know basis and so that no one can explain uh, or expose the whole picture or become a whistleblower or blackmailing and so on. So for me, it's a little strange that the banker would know that this money is being transferred to, to take out someone there and there and so on. But who am I to say? It depends on, on what uh, level he's in. And apparently he was very high up in, in, the, in the, uh, the pyramid. He named also uh, Aldo Moro, the murder of Aldo Moro. Yeah, for sure. That was one of these hits. Uh, so there's so many of them. So I'm, I'm the, like I said, the, gen the main picture, the bigger picture, is absolutely correct. Uh, I'm just putting a question mark because it's so easy to jump into conclusion. Well, I read this and boom, there it is. Well, the, the forces we are up against also are using keyboards more than weapons. You know, they can, you know, with statistics and stuff, and since they control mainstream media to such a large extent, they can just use information to persuade us. Like they, they're talking about hard weapons and soft weapons. Hard weapons is like military equipment, bullets, guns, 
uh, grenades, whatever. Soft weapons are like information, propaganda uh, that can twist you and shape you and, and push you in the direction. And we don't even know what's going on. And that is said to be even more efficient than force because if you put force against the population, they will mostly react and stand up and you will have problems with underground movements and demonstration, you name it. But if you, if you push them in a the direction with them without them even understanding what's going on, well, just like we have this uh, image of the sheep that are being pushed uh, just with a few dogs and a shepherd and just a little bark bark here and woof woof there. And then the whole group of sheep is just being pushed, 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 but the sheep don't get it. They just see, okay, I'll just follow my neighbor. I just follow, well, apparently it's good for me because otherwise who would, they would never do something to hurt me, would they? And then we just follow without thinking. But I would humbly suggest that the time has come to think and start looking around and saying, there's something weird going on here. Most people have to accept that something is strange at the moment. So how is it strange? Why is it strange? Who is doing it? And what is the purpose of it? Because there is always a reason for things that is being uh, happening. You know, sometimes, of course, there are coincidences, accidents. But when you see a whole nation or like a whole continent or a whole world that is being pushing, being pushed in the same direction, you have to ask yourself, could this be coordinated? How come? that the exact same thing is happening in England as in Sweden, as in Switzerland, as in Croatia, as in the US. Could it be coordinated? And I would suggest it is very much so. And uh, once again, just check out Agenda 21 and 30, uh, many different books. It's right in your face. It's in our face what they want to do with us. And that is not a pretty picture. So good time to wake up. Yeah. Well, uh, we talked to, um, uh, to Jim Fetzer and I uh, wanted today to talk with you also a little bit more about 9-11, JFK assassination uh, other, and other many other things. But uh, uh, I know that uh, we have talked all, almost an hour and you are traveling in two days and you were also, I'm so grateful that we can do uh, an interview, at least a short one, with Deborah Tavares tomorrow, mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, you have the time. So maybe we could talk more when you come back. Is it uh, for sure, Alexander? Anytime. One month. Or? Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna be back on uh, October the twenty second. So, uh, but Did after you, that, you yeah. will be in Sweden, in uh, uh, Sweden, Netherlands. Yeah. And Denmark. Holland. Yeah, and Holland. Yeah. So, so uh, but, but thank, thank you very much. And I hope, uh, anyway, that you will have uh, something out of it in Sweden, in my hometown, Gothenburg, Sweden. It's my hometown. I would live there <laughs> today. But uh, you know, I'm sure I'm going to have a wonderful time there. I don't, uh, uh, I don't uh, doubt that a second. It's just going to be different than I thought. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, like I say, they stop here, we go there, they stop there, we go here, they stop there, we go under, it's whatever. It's like surfing. You never know where the wave is coming from. And the better you become at surfing, uh, the better you become at dealing with waves. One thing I would recommend, though, is that uh, just like with sailing, if there's a massive wave building up in front of you, uh, don't go straight against it. it. That will possibly crush you. You have to sort of go diagonal because of the force will otherwise be too, uh, the conflict and the impact can be too much for you. And that also if you go straight towards something and you keep going, that is also where bad things happen to you when they start seeing you as a too much of a direct threat. And then the repercussions can come in different shapes. So I was go diagonal, go diagonal, go diagonal. And then two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back. It's like dancing balls and uh, just do it like that and be clever and uh, 
smooth and keep enjoying life and keep the spirit high and we will sort this whole thing but we need to be brave and open-minded that is the thing let the truth do it but you are the one who needs to deliver it you are the one that needs to stand up and i would very humbly suggest once again don't do it with close friends uh, spouses uh, your family and so on if you try to persuade them you're in for an absolute nightmare and it would just end in separation and uh, bad feelings so while you're in this uh, awakening state it's a strange term but that is what it's called when you're awake to what's going on uh, try and find like-minded so that you can freely talk about these things and and sort yourself out because it's very confusing it's very emotional for many people to start seeing what holy crap what have i been walking straight into without even noticing it so do that and then start living by example do good be good let your word count be an honest decent person uh, who spread love and who spread compassion forgiveness and then look at uh, your neighborhood you know what good can i do what can i help with what can i do instead of expecting for everything to be done for you uh, just like kennedy said ask not what your nation can do for you ask what you can do for your country same here it's very very good and uh, then step by step let's take this whole thing back because it's we are in the situation we are because we let them do it and there's so few we have billions there are a few thousand you know but we've just been so asleep and brain dead and just allowed it to happen so now we have to clean up our mess and uh, sort it out okay thank you so much Ulla. well said and uh, have a great day and uh, well i see you tomorrow but <laughs> but thank maybe you. we can do another interview later when you are back for sure uh, alexander i would love to finish with a prayer if that's okay yeah. it's i'm not a religious person but i am a spiritual being just like all of us and it goes like this may the entire universe be filled with peace and joy love and light may everyone and especially the ones who heard us be filled with peace and joy love and light may the light of truth overcome all darkness so it drew to that light and with that said alexander i will shoot off because i have a lot to do yes <laughs> bye 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 <laughs>